First of all, happy Sita Navmi to all of you. Shubh Sita Navmi. We should celebrate Sita Navmi as beautifully, as grandly as we celebrate Ram Navmi. Because, like they said in the play, in the beginning itself in Valmiki Ramayana, Valmiki Rishi says that this is Sita Ya Charitam. What is Ramayana? It's not just the way of Lord Ram. It is the life of Sita Ji. The glory of Sita Ji is brought out through Ramayana. Point one. Point two is the way Sita Ji is portrayed in Valmiki Ramayana is very different from the way in which you and I understand about her. We generally think Sita Ji is an Abula Nari, very weak, helpless, suffering, crying, victim of life, never had any control on her life, people were exploiting her, you know, she was sent away to the forests, so many challenges she went through, what a terrific life she had, nobody should go through what Sita Ji went through, you know, all that one thinks. And nowadays there are ignorant Hindus who go to the extent of saying, don't keep the name Sita for your child, because if you keep the name Sita, she will suffer like Sita. Are Ram. There is no greater character personification of strength of a woman than Sita Ji. There is no other character which has been in the entire literature of the Hindus. There is no glorious, more glorious character than Sita Ji because she is an embodiment of strength, of nobility, of love, of compassion, of tenderness, of forgiveness, of compassion, of complete freedom, strength, everything. You, you name it, grace, beauty, love, everything is there in Sita Ji's life. And such a beautiful life that Sita Ji's uh, life is. Vivekananji said she is the ideal of womanhood. Not because we don't understand, no, because we have not read the Ramayana. So we think what is the ideal of womanhood? She always suffered at the hands of Ram and this is patriarchy and exploitation and all that. It is not. You look at Sita Ji's life, one will be stunned that how did Valmiki Ji write? See, Valmiki Ji wrote what he saw, what was happening. Meaning, who is Sita Ji, first of all? So chant this shloka after me. This comes in the Tulsi Ramayan, in the invocation verses. Beautifully, Tulsi Daji has written about Sita Ji. <clears throat> Uddhavasthiti samhara Karinim kleshaharinim Sarvashreyas Karim Sitaam Nato Ham Ramavallabham Udbhavasthiti Samhara Karinim Kleshaharinim Sarvashreyas Karim Sitaam Nato Ham Ramavallabham So who is Sita Ji? She is the very primordial power of Bhagwan, who is responsible for Udbhava, Sthiti and Samhara, creation, sustenance and destruction of the whole universe. Udbhava, Sthiti, Samhara, Karini, remove all the afflictions and sorrows. Sarva Shreyas Karim, she is the one who will bring all blessings and auspiciousness. To that Sita, I prostrate, Natoham. Who is she? Ramavallabham, extremely dear to Bhagwan Ram. So this is Sita Ji, and her birth is a very extraordinary birth. You know why Janak Maharaj was ploughing? Interesting point is, both of them, Dashrat Maharaj and Janak Maharaj, they did Putra Kameshti Yagna. And to one, a putra was born, and to another, a putri was. 
सो पीपल से व्हाट इज अ पुत्र कामेष्टी यज्ञ ओनली हाँ तो पुत्री कामेष्टी ऑल्सो हैपेंड ना सो वेन दैट यज्ञ वॉज डन एज अ पार्ट ऑफ द यज्ञ वन हैज टू प्लाउ द लैंड वन पार्ट इज देयर इन दैट सो जनक महाराज फाइंड्स सीता जी फ्रॉम द अर्थ दैट यू सॉ Now don't ask if box ke andar how can she be closed and how did she breathe air and how did she live and survive and don't ask all those questions. She is the Jagat Janani. She chooses where she wants to manifest and how she wants to manifest. That's why her name is Ayonija. That is her first name. First name meaning not named formally by Janak Maharaj, but she is called as Ayonija. She is not born uh, in a regular way. She is Ayonija. Yoni means the traditional way in which one is born in a particular whatever kula and all that. So she is Ayonija. Point one. She is born from earth. Bhagwan is manifested. Now he didn't he didn't manifest from fire. Okay, he manifested uh, from the charu that was given, and then he was born properly. Sita ji was not born through a parent like that. But Bhagwan was born like that. Now, why is she born from the earth? Earth itself is a symbol of great strength. Every day, how many people we trample upon earth? But she bears everything. She is a symbol of compassion and forgiveness. We are supposed to seek her forgiveness in the morning when we get up and we put the foot on her. But otherwise, she anyway forgives, and her name is Kshama. So, when is she is born from earth? She is the supreme Maya Shakti born. From the earth, when she is born, Janak Maharaj accepts her. She he raises her because as a part of that putra kamesti yagna which was done, he got her. So it's a blessing that has come. So he accepts her as the daughter. She is only five years old. At that time, she lifts the Shiva Dhanush. That Shiva Dhanush, which requires five thousand people to drag the chariot in which that uh, Dhanush is kept, and this Sita ji, she lifts it just like that when she is only five years old. Because she lifted it at that time, the Janak Maharaj said, "Anybody who can lift this and uh, thread this bow will be." The husband for Sita ji. So, from her birth itself, you see there is strength. Then she lifts the bow as a child. Again, you see the depiction of strength there. Then she falls in love with Bhagwan Ram in the Vatika. It is not that you know women are not allowed to have love, and you know they are always behind the what is that called? Parda and that curtain and all that stuff. Happily, she sees him. He sees her in the forest, in the garden there. They exchange eye glances, and she is going there also to Parvati Devi to worship to get a you know a good husband. All that happens, and finally she is married to Bhagwan Ram, whom she has desired. In Valmiki Ramayana, there is no swayamvar. Tulsi Ramayana, there is a swayamvar. Valmiki Ramayana, there is no swayamvar. Also, the condition is kept, and many kings at different points have tried to lift that bow. Nothing happened. Then we find that Sita ji goes to the. She gets married. She has gone to Ayodhya. Now, when she goes there to Ayodhya, they spend good amount of time there. It's not that as soon as they get married, now they are sent into the forest. Some. Time they spend it, 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 you know, in a nice way also, and we find there the story comes of not the story. The incident happens of Bhagwan Ram is to be declared as the prince, and overnight he is told that he has to go to the forest. He keeps up this whole, you know, balance of mind and everything, and he accepts. Whatever he is told to him, and he goes, tells Kaushalya Mata also. But when he comes to Sita Ji, he breaks down. You think about the 
rapport that is there between Sita Ji and Bhagwan Ram. In the fr in front of the world, he has to keep up whatever his composure, his equanimity, his calmness, his strength he exhibits. But when he comes inside and he has to convey it to Sita Ji, he breaks down and he doesn't uh, feel that, you know, why, how can I cry in front of my wife and all that. And she also understands him and she doesn't tell him that what you are crying like a weakling, you are a Kshatriya, you should not cry, none of that. So she is very kind, tender, compassionate. And in that, what happens? He has made up his mind that he, he will go alone. He does not, uh, you know, ask her that will you come with me. But Sita ji, you see her arguments, I'm just going to show you the arguments that are given, so beautiful are uh, these arguments which are there. See, for her to, for her Ramji is his, his, her, her whole life. She could have chosen to remain in the, for, in the, what you call, the palace. But she chose to go to the forest. That itself is a choice that she made. If you look at her life, every moment you will see her making choices. It, she's not a victim of life. She only chooses her life properly. And even if there are people who don't uh, accept, she will still do what she feels is the right thing to do. That's the strength that she has. And so, here we find, now see here, some of the arguments are so powerful. I'm just going to read now, I don't have time to read the shlokas, but you read in this uh, Yodhya Khan, it will come nicely. So Bhagavan Ram explains to her the entire dangers of the forest. There are wild animals and the forest will not be comfortable. There are thorns and there will be no proper place to sleep and food, what will you get? Only some fruits and roots and everything he explains. And he tells her, so let me go to the forest. And he, she hears him out. She's a good listener also. That one thing we have to learn from both Sita Ji and Bhagwan Ram. They both listen to each other. But generally in a relationship, either person doesn't listen or nobody listens. Each one is wanting to only talk. She listens, properly she listens everything. And then look at her answer, what she says. You speak of the horrors of the forest, of the wild beasts there. Do you tell me that where you are, the wild beasts will come? Or if they come, they will be a source of fear? With you near me, I am going to be afraid of nothing. What a strong man you are. When I was a little girl in my father's house, the soothsayers used to come and say, this little girl is destined to live in the forest. From that time, I have developed a kind of love of the forest and I am keen to go to the forest. The good, pious men who can see the future have told the same thing about me. And I have fixed my heart. I have told you more than once that I want to go to the forest and live there and you have given me permission to do so. Now a good opportunity has come and let us go cheerfully. She says this. Then Bhagwan Ram is not saying yes. She has explained all this. So he is not saying yes. So what does she say? She give, quotes the Pativrata Dharma and she tells him what a pati has to do and what a patni has to do is to be together in all ups and downs of life. That's the dharma of both of them towards each other. So, beautifully she says, see. A woman who is given by her father, you know, they, they will do this kanyadan when they do, they'll take water and they will offer. So, this is such a woman uh, who is given by the father into the hands of the bridegroom belongs to him and cannot be separated from him in this world or in the other. I am not going to leave you knowing this dharma. Even after death, she is his. So she says, tell me what is the reason if when I am bound to you in this fashion, you don't want to take me with you. Meaning dharma itself gives me the right. Our shastra and our dharma gives me the right. Who are you not to take me? Then, I am, if you do not wish to take me, I have no reason to live after that. And she gives an ultimatum. She says, I may take poison, I may enter fire, or I will throw myself into water. Three options. I can do any of this. 
And then she says that even when Bhagwan Ram was not moved, so the expression she has used is Samana Sukha Dukhi Sukha Dukhi Na Dukhi Neem. That I am supposed to be with you in Sukha and Dukha equally. So I can't choose only good times. And when you are in difficult times, I can't ensure that you know you are left to suffer. I have to be with you even in those times. Which woman will choose like that? Not easy no? to go leaving the forest, leaving the comforts of the palace. Go there to the forest. But now comes the stunning part. Bhagwan Ram didn't budge even now. So what does she say? She says, I think of my father. He sought all the world for a bridegroom and he at last got you. Meaning from the whole world he was searching for me, finally he found you. Because you fulfilled that condition. If he thought he got hold of the best man for me, he was a fool. What he had got was a woman, a cowardly woman, dressed like a man. Let's look at that. Solid words, these are huh? terrific words. Sa tama, sa tu, sa tamuttama, sam vigna, sita vipula vakshasam, pranayat chabhimanacha, parichikshepa raghavam. Kim tvamanyata vaidehaha, pita me mithila dhipaha. Rama Jama Taram Prapya Striyam Purusha Vigraham. This is the word. Striyam Purusha Vigraham. You are a cowardly woman in the garb of a man. Think Sita Ji can tell this to Bhagwan Ram. What is the freedom of speech that she has? And what is the relationship between her and uh, Bhagwan? Then, what these things prove is only one point. Many people think that how can Sita Ji be so arrogant? How can she speak like this to Bhagwan Ram and all that? But we should remember who is Sita Ji? She is a Kshatriya woman or not? Will Kshatriya woman not have that uh, fiery spirit in her blood? She is a proper Kshatriya woman, you know, to Janak Maharaj, and of course she is the Maya Shakti itself. She does not stop. She goes on. She says, What are you afraid of? What are the things which you dread that you should reject me, who have no other person to rely on earth? I am yours entirely, utterly, and yet you discard me. Where is your moral courage gone? Physical courage, one aspect she challenged. Then she's saying, where is your moral courage gone? Think about it. You must have been the doer of some terrible deed in order that you should lose your heart so utterly. Meaning you have done some bad karma in the past that right now you are acting like a coward. I am not going to look at another person. Do not throw me on Bharata. Such a harsh thing. She says, don't throw me on Bharata. When Bhagwan Ram said that you be here in the palace. Because Bharata is supposed to be the king. Now she, she what you call that, uh, twist that line. Saying, don't throw me on Bharata. Bhagwan is not telling her to stay with Bharat. He is saying, Bharat is here, you stay here. He is the king now. And he actually has told her before that, don't praise me in front of Bharat. That portion comes before. She says, don't praise me in front of Bharat because he may feel lesser. Because at the moment, Bhagwan doesn't know no, that he is, Bharat is not wanting the kingdom. He has been told that uh, he has to go to forest and Bharat wants to, has to be the king. So she, he has told her that don't praise me in front of Bharat. He may feel lesser and he may get threatened. So don't do that. Then she is telling him all this. That uh, don't throw me on Bharat. Having brought me up from the time that I was a little creature and having drawn me to yourself in so many ways, why do you hand me to other people? Like a man who lives upon the earnings of a woman. When I am with you, I do not want good food, plain Fair will be like delicious food for me. The dust of the forest uh, which you have trodden will be the sandal after my heart. The grass will be the most luxurious couch. Now you think about it. She gives more arguments. I am not going to go into those details. But what does she say? She applies threat. She applies persuasion. She applies dharma. She applies this uh, duty, sanctity of marriage. 
everything she has applied. So she is not a weak woman. To win her argument, she presents her case very convincingly. And the beauty here is, Bhagwan Ram does not take any offense. See, when we speak about gender equality and equal rights and all that, here is, there is no such feeling that, you know, man is superior and woman is inferior and that woman has to always be subordinate to the man. In Sita Ji's character, we don't see that happening. That woman is subordinate to the man all the time. But that is how she has been portrayed by people. That everything that Bhagavan Ram says, she has to listen. Are, look at what all she has said. What is Bhagavan Ram's reply? The beauty is there. Bhagavan Ram's reply is, you need not say that putting you to any trouble, I am going to Swarga and be happy there. When I described the horrors of the forest, I was not afraid of them. I knew I was competent to protect you. I had the strength, the skill, the vigilance. Nevertheless, you wonder why I said no at first. I do not, I did not know what a courageous woman you really were. Now I see who you are, what you are, and I will obey your instructions. How can I leave you behind? You have been made by Brahma for that purpose. See that here. What a line he says, na? I will obey your instructions. How many husbands will tell that to their wives? I will obey your instructions. He's saying that. No, Swamiji, hand-packed husbands will do that. Hello, we are not talking about that. He's not, he's not a hand-packed husband here. He is a man of strength himself. And she... See, if you are strong by yourself, you will respect other person's strength. That is as simple as that. He is a strong person, Bhagwan Ram. He respects the strength of uh, Sita Ji. And now he says something fantastic. This is a beautiful shloka which comes. Sarvatha sadrsham sīte mama syasya kulasya cha vyavasāya manukranta sīte tvamati shobhanam What a beautiful shloka this is. He says, my family is honoured by you. Your family is also honoured by you. You have done a thing. You have made me do a thing which is worthy alike of your house and my house. This is what he says. That this choice that you have made brings honour to my family and to your family. Please think what times we are talking about. We are talking about the times of Ramayana where Sita Ji is going to be in the forest with Bhagwan Ram, 14 years. Unheard of example before. In those times also, Sita Ji's decision, Bhagwan Ram upholds. So she is definitely a symbol of strength. She is not obstinate. See, if she was obstinate, she would not have given all the reasons. She gave all different types of reasons. So she is a proper thinker, she is a strong-minded person and we find that Bhagwan Ram also respects that. Then we come to another part, we are in the forest now, Virata, Viradha is one demon who has come. So in the forest when this Viradha demon comes there, this Viradha captures Sita Ji first and then he leaves her he takes Bhagwan Ram and Lakshman and he is travelling at a great speed. So Bhagwan Ram and Lakshman, they think that uh, anyway he is going in the direction that we are going. Let him carry us for some time. <laughs> but suddenly they realise that Are, Sita Ji has got left behind. What does Sita Ji do at that time? She is not aware of this plan. She is thinking that this demon has taken away you know, Ram and Lakshman and uh, he is going to harm them. See what she, she does there. So she says that, uh, oh Virad, she goes in front of this Virad. She lifted her arms high in the air and she cries out to this Virad. And she says, oh Virad, take my homage and worship. I yield them gladly, but do me this favour. Leave them alone and take me instead and eat me up. Bears and tigers are going to eat me up anyways. Why should I fall a prey to them? You eat me and release them. She offers herself to them. To that Virad, saying you release both of them. That is her love for Bhagwan Ram. So she is not an ordinary woman who gets scared. 
she goes in front of that viraj and says you take me but you leave them <clears throat> then um, we find another incident which will come now and that is when she is uh, told by lakshman ji see when bhagwan ram has gone to maricha now there is another point we have to understand many times bhagwan ram told sita ji that that golden deer is not real and that is some demon who is in the disguise but she didn't listen so finally bhagwan had to go she was insistent so bhagwan went now when bhagwan went he told her and went that lakshman will be there you to take care of you i will go and come we all know the story marich there he you know speaks out oh sita oh lakshman save me and in the in the voice of bhagwan ram so sita ji feels that uh, he needs help this is where she has come under the delusion where you know her attention went from bhagwan ram to marich and now she has gone into delusion so lakshman ji assures her that bhagwan doesn't need any help there is nobody who can be a match for bhagwan and just some time back bhagwan has killed those 14000 rakshasas khar and dushan but sita ji doesn't uh, listen to what lakshman ji is assuring to her she is very upset she is very you know angry also that lakshman ji is not going so look at what she tells lakshman ji she says aham tava priyam manye ramasya vyasanam mahat ramasya vyasanam drishtva tenai tani prabhashase i fancy that you are now pleased that ram has come into danger and this is you are having evil eyes on me and it is also possible that bharat has told you to do this and see the line the line she says is that maybe you desire me for yourself or that other brother bharat may have asked you to dispatch rama and bring me to him these are words that sita ji has told lakshman ji in anger she doesn't mean any of this but in anger she speaks this because she is desperate that what is her desperation her desperation is love for bhagwan ram and bhagwan is in danger why is lakshman not going for some for that time she has forgotten who is bhagwan ram what is his strength so she speaks all this and uh, she further says that while you stand there refusing to go i am going to deprive you and bharat of what seems to be your desire by taking my life i will be drowned in the godavari i will tie a rope around my neck i will fall from a height i will drink poison or i will enter fire five things she says but i will not touch another now when she says all these things what will lakshman ji do finally he has to go because she has said something which is terrible in valmiki ramayana there is no lakshman rekha and all that he goes when he goes to bhagwan ram what you expect bhagwan ram to do lakshman ji has all with all good intentions he tried to do what he can to persuade sita ji but she didn't listen and she spoke such terrible things now he had to leave but when he goes there what does bhagwan ram say see he says that certainly you knew that i was quite equal to all these rakshasas put together from maricha and the deer no harm could have occurred to me you knew that yet you allowed yourself to be driven away because of an angry speech from sita i cannot forgive you you left your post of duty and left her unprotected sita is there in danger why did you come merely because she was angry i am not pleased with you lakshman you have done wrong when she became angry and said absurd things you became angry too and came away you have neglected my order my command 
Now think about it. What will be Lakshmanji's position? Lakshmanji will think, what is this? Dono taraf se mil gaya. For no fault of mine. And I left my wife there and came, served these people, and these two people are, be, you know. But Lakshmanji doesn't think like that because Lakshmanji understands what is the concern Bhagwan has for Ramji, uh, for Sita ji, and what concern Sita ji has for Ramji. He never misunderstands. That is the glory of his character also. And Sita ji also does not mean. At that point in time, you know, one interesting point Bhagavan Ram tells uh, Lakshmanji that no blame rests upon Sita. She is mad by anger. You must not get angry with mad people. This is not to justify anger, okay? But this is said in Ramayana that you should understand her, her circumstances and don't go only by... Now somebody says that if he had not gone, if Sita ji had committed any you know, act what she said, no, of the five things. If she had done any of that, then how would it be? What would Bhagavan Ram expect? That time Lakshmi would have got it royally, no? So, what Bhagavan Ram would expect is, he should have gone from there, but been around there somewhere. And protect her from far. That's the expectation of Bhagavan Ram. If he had done that, Sita ji would not have been in trouble. But obviously, these are all things in the hindsight. So that way, you see Sita ji's life, many, many things happen. She describes to Ravan about Bharat, about uh, Lakshman ji. Ravan has come in the disguise of a sannyasi and asking her that why are you in this forest? So she is telling everything about the past, about the exile and Dashrat Maharaj and the boon of Kaikeyi and all that. In that, she describes Lakshman and she uses two words. She says, Dharmachari and Didhavrata. That very clearly shows that she did not think that Lakshmanji really had some bad uh, uh, you know, attitude towards her. But that moment, she was full of anger and frustration. So she said what she said. But she doesn't feel that actually. Then she speaks to Ravan. Some of that you already heard. It's very nice. When Ravan tries to go on, you know, scheduling her and trying to get her to marry him, she says that in desiring me, the devoted and the worthy companion of Ram, you are a low jackal, desiring a lioness far beyond your reach. You can no more touch me than you can touch the radiance of the sun. And she gives many analogies. She says that, uh, what is the difference between you and Ram? She says, the disparity there is between the ocean and a tiny rill, between the nectar and sour gruel, between gold and lead, between sandal and mire, between an elephant and a cat, between Garuda and a crow, between a peacock and a gull, between a swan and a vulture. That is the difference between Ram and you. So, just think of the woman who is alone in Lanka with the most powerful man surrounded by all the Rakshasis and she has the guts to tell this on his face and best part of this entire thing is what you know actually it's not on the face that's the best part she puts one blade of grass down there and she's looking at that blade of grass and she's telling everything she will not even look at Ravan that is her strength far from that victim attitude we keep thinking that she is a victim and all that, but she, she is not like that. And um, she also had the Rishyamuk Parvat. She has the presence of mind at that time to take her upper cloth, put the jewels and throw it. In that crisis situation, she still has the ability to be smart, to think. That is her strength. How many people will be able to do all that? Very So we have to think about Sita ji in different ways. So I will conclude with this last two episodes. Uh, huh. One very interesting point comes, is where she tells this Ravan that I have so much power in me that if I only care and direct it against you, you would be a mass of ash. 
but I refrain from doing so because I want to preserve this tapas of mine. Besides, I have not received an order from Ram to defend myself. The burden rests upon him and he himself should come and save me. I ought not to save myself. Think about it. It's not that Ram, she is a weakling and that she needs Ram to save. She can very well destroy this Ravan. She says, by my entire tapas, I will look at you, you will be finished. But I need to preserve my tapas and it is up to him. It is his honour which is at stake. He has to come for his honour. This is the character of Sita Ji. How brilliant is that? It is not that uh, Ram, she was an Abla Nari who has to be saved and Ram has to come all the way to save her. Ram's honour is at stake. The honour of the Ragukul is at stake. And she is aware of that. So she says very clearly. And she went through one whole year. She was for 12 months in captivity. This happened, this whole instance happened in the last one year of one was 12 years, uh, so 12 months in captivity. She has become thin, weak physically, but she is like a blazing fire. And Hanumanji meets her, all that happens. So, this is the character of Sita Ji. And when Bhagwan tells her to come, so in between happens, this Agni thing also happens that you saw in the play. Uh, not in the play, in the quiz we spoke about it, that she prays to Agni Devata that fire should not harm Hanuman. And finally when she is brought, Bhagwan tells Vibhishan to go and bring her as a, tell her to come as a queen. Dress up with all the you know, ornaments and everything. Sita Ji says, I don't want to come as a queen. But Bhagwan insists, no, bring her as a queen. So Vibhishan ji says, no, that's his order, you have to come as a queen only. And when he comes, when she comes there, he tells her a few things that obviously uh, people misunderstand. And uh, he tells, very clearly he tells her that, see the heart of King Ram as he beheld Sita near him was torn for the fear of public scandal. That scandal is not about him. The scandal is about whom? About Sita Ji. That people will talk bad about Sita Ji. So what he has to do, it is for Sita Ji. Point one. Point two, what he has to do is also for the Praja of the Ayodhya to accept her as a queen properly and clear the name that you know, she can be a queen when because he is going to return and he has to be the king and she has to be the queen. So, that is the second point. Third point is, in spite of so many times Bhagwan telling her, she didn't listen about the Maricha, the deer. Lakshmanji told her many times about Ramji's glory. She didn't listen. She doubted Lakshmanji also. So, finally, karma will have karma follow, no? And so many people died, so many things happened. If she had not, if she had heard either Ramji or Lakshmanji, she would have been fine. Nothing would have happened to her. In the forest especially. Sita ji, when she spoke so many things about Lakshmanji, we don't think, na, ki why did she say like that? Lakshman became a victim. Nobody questions, why did Sita speak like this about Lakshmanji? But when Bhagwan Ram gets angry, and he tells something, we all take it to heart. Why did he do like that? Are Bhagwan Ram understood what Sita Ji's anger was. Na? I told you that entire internet of Lakshman for that. She, he understood na, what was the mindset of Sita Ji more than the words. Sita Ji should have understood the mindset of Bhagwan Ram or not. So what did Bhagwan say at that time, you see? Let it be known to you that all this exertion in the shape of the war which has been successfully carried out through thanks to the prowess of my friends, the monkeys and others, was not undertaken for your sake. May prosperity attend to you. This was done by me to vindicate the good conduct, my good conduct and wipe off the obloquy coming to me from all sides as well as the stigma on my illustrious dynasty. Now, obviously, he can say that. There is nothing wrong in that. And he also says, that uh, 
Therefore, go where you like, O Janaka's daughter. I grant you leave to do so this very day. All the ten directions are open to you, O good lady. No more purpose of mine remains to be served by you. We can tell that in anger or not. Sometimes we say, Jao, dafao jao yaan se. I don't want to see your face. People say it or not in anger. What will you do after that? You will never show your face or what? But anyway, Sita ji took it to heart and then she only tells Lakshman ji that, uh, you know, raise a pyre for me. Chitam me kuru saumitre vyasana syasya bheshajam mithya pavado apahata naham jivitum utsahe. These are her words. So she says that light a pyre for me, that is the only antidote against this calamity. I no longer, to, I no longer desire to survive. Smitten as I am with false reproaches. I will enter fire which is the only course appropriate for me. Renounced as I am in a public gathering by my husband. Who is no longer pleased by my virtues. Now she, and she says this and she goes in into the fire. So this is called Agni Pravesha. And we have to also understand that this Agni Pravesha in those times is if somebody is truthful, you know in even after Bhagwan Ram's time, in many other kingdoms across the world, you should have, you should see. If somebody is telling the truth, they will bring hot iron and they have to put their hand on that iron. And if they are telling the truth, nothing will happen to them. That truth test was there at that time. So, she entered fire not to prove herself. As I said in the beginning, she did not prove herself at any point in time. She entered that fire because she doesn't want to live away from Bhagwan Ram. And of course then Agni Devata comes out and convinces Bhagwan Ram. Devatas come and explain to him who is he and why he has taken birth. Dashrat Maharaj comes and vouches and says all this. Not because Bhagwan Ram needs to know all this. All this he had done for whom? For the Praja. Sacrifice that both Bhagwan Ram and Sita ji did was for the Praja. This entire episode is meant for the Praja actually. It is not meant for... It's not a personal, uh, you know, relationship that is being at stake. Our question comes from that standpoint. That Ram and Sita. Why did Ram doubt Sita? The question is not at all at that personal level. Question is at the total level. And at the total level, Sita ji excelled. No doubt in that. You think about Sita ji's choice. Entering into Agni, is it a choice as a weak person or as a strong person? Why it is as a strong person? Because she knows her stand very clearly. She doesn't need to prove it to people, point one. Point two, she also knows that Bhagwan does not doubt her actually. That's the rapport between both of them. In 14 years, how they have lived and Bhagwan has fulfilled every desire of hers. So it's not that Bhagwan doubts her love or he, he doubts her genuineness or purity or anything. And Bhagwan tells that also very clearly. But it is her choice to make the people understand that for their sake, if she has to go through the fire, she will go through the fire. She went through this fire ordeal, which is physical fire ordeal, and Bhagwan Ram also went through the fire ordeal. When he sent Sita ji away, because Sita ji only asked her, asked him, when they returned to Ayodhya, there is a nice gathering there and people, uh, coron coronation happens, everything happens. And there is one description in Valmiki Ramayana of enjoyment that they have together. When they all enjoy together, then they are... Uh, you know, Bhagwan Ram is very pleased. There are dancers and musicians and wine and meat and everything is there. They are Kshatriyas. So, they are enjoying. In that moment, he asks her, what do you desire? You know, Sita ji says that all this is very good, but you know, I miss the forest. Fourteen years, huh? She is in forest. And she has lived there and satsang of sadhus, sannyasis, rishis, munis, tyagis, tapasvis. She has experienced that. That's another choice. That's why I'm saying all this reflects her choice and her mindset. She says, I miss that. I want to spend at least a day 
in the forest, in the hermitage of some sadhu and uh, do satsang because I am really missing that. She says that to Bhagavan Ram. And in few days the entire incident happens where finally Bhagavan has to send her. And when he sends her there, he told Lakshman to go, drop her. Lakshman is in tears. So Sita ji is saying, why are you crying? The entire journey, he didn't tell anything. Finally, he drops her to Valmiki ji's ashram, outside there. And he is in tears. Then she says, why are you crying? Because she is thinking that Bhagwan is fulfilling her desire to, you know, have satsang and going to the forest. But she did not know. Then Lakshman ji explained, this is what has happened, that the people are speaking in this way about the character of the queen. If the queen's character is doubtable and Ram ji has accepted the queen, we will have to accept our women also when they do anything. Now this is what the people are speaking. Valmiki doesn't speak about Dhobi. Then Sita ji understood everything. And finally she says that you go and tell him that I am with him. See, Sita ji's reply to Lakshman ji, to, to Bhagwan Ram through Lakshman ji is this. Hear me, Lakshmana, my last words to you. I was born to be unhappy. The spirit of sorrow is incarnate in me by the will of the creator. So far as I can see, my conduct has been pure. I have not deserved to be abandoned by my Lord and Master. It is clear that I have committed. Uh, huh. It is clear that I may have committed some atrocious sin in my previous birth, which is why these negative experiences are coming. Maybe I cruelly parted a man from his loving wife. When last I lived in hermitages, I was with Ram and in devoted service to him. I did not feel any privations or hardship. Tell me now how I shall explain my presence here all alone to the rishis. What crime shall I own as the cause of my exile? They will say with one voice, Our King Ram is the soul of justice. Why has he discarded you? Ah, Lakshman, I have no use for life and may end it in the waters of the Ganga. But I have in me the proper seed of the royal family and may not kill myself. Till then, Lakshman ji does not know. Nobody knows that she is pregnant. Only Bhagwan Ram knows. Well, leave me then to my fate. Now, this is another strength of hers. She does not leave her life because there is the lineage in her womb. Now, see that. Because if she hated, if she had dvesha, she would have committed suicide. Let those two children also die and the Vamsha of Ramji will finish. She does not do that. She lives in that separation. She gives birth to love and kush. So she says that you take one message, take back this message to Ram. What is her message? See, she is disturbed. I read out the entire paragraph because to show that she is disturbed. But what is the thing that she says? My prostrations, my humble prostrations at the feet of my mother-in-law as well as at the feet of the king. Of the king, he says. she says. Huh? When on my account you have touched their feet with your head, Tell him from me, you know dharma and practice it at all risks. In your heart you will admit my character is without a stain. Meaning she understood that he doesn't doubt her. I have never been false to you whether in mind or in body. Yet because your subjects suspect my purity, you send me out. So be it, I submit. Your honor and love, you honor and love your people. This is the message he gives. she gives. You honor and love your people, the same as you honor and love your brothers. If to preserve your good name among them, I must be sacrificed, I am content to be sacrificed. As you serve your subjects, so I serve you, not less but more. These are her words. So she understood and she told him to do proper rule with dharma. And don't hate those subjects. And for how many years did Bhagwan Ram rule those subjects? 11,000 years. Think about that. 11,000 years he ruled those very subjects who are the cause for his separation with his wife. 
And when love and Kusha are born, after 12 years they meet. Bhagavan Ram meets them. And Valmiki ji tells about the purity of Sita ji. Why does Bhagavan again have to ask about her purity? Because public did not know when he, was, when he sent her to exile that she was pregnant. Again they will wonder whose children are these. The whole episode is for the people. It is not for the personal relationship between Bhagwan Ram and Sita ji. She brought up love and kush alone. In today's age, what we call it? Single parenting. In the forest, alone, she brought up. And handed over both of them to Bhagwan Ram before going into the earth. She finished all her duties before she entered the earth. Even though she felt sad to be away from Bhagwan, because she understood the sacrifice he is doing and she is also doing. And he understood her, him truly that he stands for dharma more than anything else. Dharma is dearest to him and he will not compromise with dharma. That is Sita Ji's life. Complete from the birth to going back to the earth. Nothing but embodiment of strength. Bolo Sita Maya Ki! Yeah.